Today I'm doing a video on the uh, basics of a Darmstadt slide rule. Uh, many of you may have seen this on eBay. They're a little more rare in the U.S., but this was a German design. This particular one is uh, a Nestler, uh, number 21. Um, Faber Castle made these. I, I don't recall the name of that one, but you can see it's uh, all in German. This vintage is probably early 1950s, I would say. It is a simplex uh, slide rule. That is, it has no calculations in the back other than the, the slides here to do exponentials. Okay, so it's very compact. It's a simplex. It's easy to read. It has these nice train track style uh, markings for the numbers. These are very easy to read, in my opinion. I make fewer mistakes and can interpolate a little better when I'm doing practice on one of these things. Um, the uh, back includes a cheat sheet of how to use the very rudimentary instructions. These are all in German, but it also has, you know, constants, conversions, and things like that that might be useful. And uh, as you can see here, we've got exponentials on the other side of the rule. You could either flip this back over, and I'll show in a minute how to use it for making exponential calculations. But the advantage of this is it's compact. Uh, it has a ruler, log 10 scale on this. On the top it has sine and cosine on the bottom side which is a little bit different for a slide rule so it has a little extra cursor here that you can read off the uh, the angles and then translate that into the to the d scale numbers uh, going from uh, up to maximum of one so it has 12 scales very simple but it i think uh, folks like uh, Werner von braun and albert einstein and uh, Sergei Korolev from the Soviet Union, the master of the Soviet space program, like these for their simplicity, doing quick calculations. Uh, of course, for more horsepower, an engineer in the 50s, 60s might use something like a K and E. This is a decilon with multiple log scales. You can see it's very intimidating to look at. So, uh, massive numbers here. So, it, it possibly, unless you're really you know trained to do this on this or on this type of rule, it might be very complicated and you have more room for mistake for doing simple calculations, possibly. Although very powerful, it's still one of my favorite slide rules. But for this one, it's, it's simple, easy to read. Uh, I can do a couple of quick calculations here. Let's say uh, we want to do a sine of uh, 19.5. We would, first of all, we can't do anything on this scale. We've got to go to the to this the side scale signs are in the dark numbers so 19.5 and it's hard to see on on the camera but there's a cursor there and I'll slide it to 19.5 on the side and read off approximately 0.334 on the scale and I think if you look at the on the calculator we get 0.3338 so very close, within three significant digits. One problem with all cosine sine calculations, we look at extreme angles. Uh, this one is very useful for large angles. Say if we want to do something like, uh, in this case, sine of uh, 82 degrees. Okay, if we look at the cursor here now, it goes up to 80, 90, but it's very hard to do resolution on these. It's hard to pick them apart. I can get close to 82 here, and I get 0.99 something, but it's very, you know, not, it's hard to, to get many significant digits out of the right end of the logarithmic scale. <clears throat> so they make provisions here for the P scale, sometimes called P. It's like the square root of 1 minus X squared. Uh, but what you do is you read 82 not from the black numbers or the red, but from the from the red numbers. It'd be like I was reading a cosine. So I go here to 82, 80, 81, and 82. Instead of looking on the D scale now, I look at the the bottom red scale, and I get here approximately. It's, it's, it reads from right to left, so a point nine nine, almost zero two five. I can get almost five significant digits for that high number. And uh, I did previously in a calculator, I got 0 0.99027. So I get at least four significant digits from this method. Okay. 
All right, what about the case of an exponential? Let's try one I've already written down here, like something like 4 raised to the 3.5 power. A little bit different in the Darmstadt scale. What we do is first we go flip it over, and we see we just find 4. We don't do any kind of, it does the decimal points for you. So we just find 4 there on the bottom part of the scale. That's our base. Flip it back over. Go to the right index. Right now the right index is at about 0.7 two or something like that, but we won't copy down that number. We'll just put our cursor there to mark it off where that is on the right index. Now we move our exponent up to that cursor. So what I say, 4.5, oh, excuse me, 3.5. Okay, so now I'm reading 3.5, my exponent there. Flip it back over, and we should be able to read on the bottom here it's hard to read sometimes, but I get about approximately 126 on that scale. It's kind of hard to make out many significant digits. 126, and uh, do it on the calculator. What do I get? I get 128. So I get about two significant digits doing exponents, which you do, do sacrifice a little bit when you do exponents on any slide rule, but probably more so on this one since it's very hard to read. So there you have it. It's a very compact. It is uh, much easier to read than say, like I said before, the comparing that to the excuse me to the decilon, and uh, much more compact, and probably good for an executive on the fly doing a space program getting into the moon. We'll get you there.